transmission. So it's time to have a battle between the X-T4 and the iPhone 12 Pro Max to see which one does better. Obviously this X-T4 is going to do better, but why not do it anyway? Uh, I had a subscriber, Faisal is his name, reach out to ask me to do this video and I was thinking, why the hell not? So I ended up buying this device. Uh, I've been wanting to get one of these for a while. Uh, so I can have both of them. Uh, I've tried to do two cameras like this and it's just, it's just a mess. It never works. If you're new to the channel or you're, this is your first time here, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button below. Join the family. Uh, new subscribers show me that people are interested in more videos and, and make sure to like and comment. Let me know what you like about this video, what you don't. If you have the X-T4, if you have the iPhone 12 Pro Max, any of these, let me know and I, sh I should be able to answer them. I usually get back pretty fast. So I wanted to run through several things. Uh, first thing, I, I took some video of my kids in the backyard under harsh lighting conditions. So the sun was really beaten down, you can see here that it's just, it's really hitting them. And um, I just figured it'd be good just so you can see, um, both cameras are 10 bit. So how do they handle the sun beating down on the face? Uh, it's pretty good. It's definitely a lot better than what the Sony a7 III does. That's one of my biggest frustrations with that camera is that it just, uh, it, there's just a little light out. It struggles for some reason. Uh, you need a, a good ND filter. And and um, that's the other thing is on the Fuji X-T4, I do have like a really light ND filter on it, but not anything too extreme. And the iPhone, it's just the straight camera app. But so I think that overall, the iPhone does really good when it comes to the, the sun hitting it. It seems to, with their, the algorithms, be able to handle the, the sun and, 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 and shift. Now, with the X-T4, I am using auto shutter speed, and then I have my ISO all the way down to 160, which I'm still baffled at. And if you know this camera and can tell me, why doesn't it go to 100? I, I don't understand why 160 is the lowest ISO on this camera. It doesn't make sense. So um, the other test I wanted to do here is uh, some night tests. So walking around my neighborhood, showing the difference between how these both handle in low light is their grain. The iPhone seems to do pretty good this year when it comes to grain. I mean, it is a bit, it's noisier definitely than the X-T4, as you can see, but it seems to be able to, to handle low light better than any iPhone before it. And I don't know if that has to do with the, the bigger sensor or uh, there's a lower aperture on it. I have no idea. Or if Apple's having some kind of software tricks in the background that they're doing. If it was my only camera, I think I would pretty be pretty happy with it. But since I have the X-T4 and the a7 III, it's, uh, it's nowhere near those, the level of those cameras. Now, um, the other test I want to do is vlogging test. So me walking around the neighborhood and uh, let's see how that looks. Okay, this is me vlogging at night. So you can see how they both look. How is the Fuji X-T4 look? I got it basically set on auto for the ISO, just so it'll fluctuate. And for the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it's just um, set to the regular camera app. So I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to switch with arms because both of these on it, it's kind of heavy. 
I'm using the Fuji, the uh, 23 millimeter 1.4 lens, and I think it's an excellent lens. Okay, so the other test I wanted to do is rolling shutter. And I think that it's important so you could see this. I figured it'd be better to do it at night just to make it even even harder on both of them. And um, how does this look? So I'm, I'm going to start moving faster and faster with these just to, to be able to, to see where the, you know, are we getting any jello effect? And I don't seem to see it in either one of these. I think the iPhone actually handles it a little bit better and I don't know if it has to do with the stabilization of that new stabilizer on the wide lens so I, I'm not sure but it does look really good. So the other test I wanted to do is walking around but also just figuring out how the stabilization is between both of these and from what I can see, the iPhone is really, really solid when it comes to stabilization. It's definitely better than the X-T4. Now, the X-T4, I think, in my opinion, looks really good. I know a lot of people um, online always talk about how like it has warpy stuff in the corners. I just don't notice it that much. Maybe I, I, I just don't see stuff like that, but I think it looks really good. 10 times better than the a7 III. The a7 III, you know, you take a step, it just shakes. And that's why I'm excited to get the a7S III to be able to test that active, which I've seen looks really good. And uh, pretty much as good as the, the X-T4, if not better. So, what do you guys think? Are, are you impressed with this? Are, are you impressed with the iPhone 12 Pro Max? Do you like, uh, do you own the, the Fuji X-T4? Um, is this just a stupid test? You know, am I wasting time? But I did want to do this just because, like I said, Faisal reached out and asked me if I would do this video. And, and um, I don't have a lot of content right now, so why not? Anyhow, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Let me know what you think, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.